this video, we're going to take a look at the bevel node. The bevel node can be used to create hard surface details very quickly. Here you can see a sci-fi door that was created using the bevel node. To access the bevel node, you can go to the library and just start to type bevel. So here we have the bevel node. I'll just left click and drag and drop this node here into the graph. Now if we take a look at the node itself, you can see that we have two inputs, an input and a custom curve. Let's take a look at the bevel node as it stands in this current graph. For the primary input, you simply feed in a black and white mask as you see here, and the bevel node will create bevels. So if I just double click the bevel node and zoom in, you can see that it creates bevels around this mask that was input. You have controls for the distance, smoothing, as well as being able to add a custom curve, as well as affect the normal intensity. The outputs for the bevel node are as follows. You have a height, which is what we're viewing here, and you also have the normal. So the normal map is automatically generated in the bevel node. However, in this example, we're just going to use the height because we're actually going to composite another shape into this graph. So let's take a look at how this would work. So here I have a shape, and this is just an SVG. It's just a real simple shape here, uh, just a couple squares that I created in this SVG file. So now we have our bevel node. Let's go ahead and get this guy into place. And so for my primary input, I'm just going to make this connection here. So you can see that I have taken the output from the SVG and fed that into the primary input of the bevel node. Let's double click the bevel node to view this here in the 2D view. So by default, you can see that the distance is set to 0.5. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to double click to numerically enter a value. And I'm going to type in zero and hit enter. So this essentially is no bevel. So if we take a look at zero being the no bevel point, if we start to move the slider to the right, you can see that we bevel inwards. And if we move the slider to the left, we begin to bevel outwards. So here I'm actually going to type in 0 0.01 and keep this as my bevel value. Now I'll zoom in even closer and you can see that we also have a smoothing value. So some of the bevels could start to get a little stair-stepped in this area. So if you want to introduce some smoothing, you can do so to smooth that out. That will also smooth around the edges of the bevel. In my case here, I'm going to set this to zero. So now we'll back out and we have our bevel in place. So what I'm gonna do now, again, like I said, if we look at our height, which is what we're viewing now, we have height information, and then here if I double click, you can see that I've generated a normal. So I could use this normal as standalone, or I could also combine it with some of the other normal combined nodes here in the Substance Library. However, in my case, I just want to composite this down into the current shape that I have. So in this case, I've already inserted in a blend node, so here you can see that I have this blend node. And what I need to do is just simply take my height channel and I'm just gonna plug this into the foreground. So if I double click now, you can see that I have the shape composited. And since I'm passing this along through the rest of the chain here, you can see that my bevel operation has already been placed here into the model. And so very quickly, I can start to just build up shapes to create a hard surface asset. Again, if I want, I can simply go back to the SVG and I can select my shape. So for instance, uh, if I want to make this just a little bit thinner, I can just move this value here. So I'm again, just changing my shape. And you can see here in my viewport that we get this interactive feedback with the operation as we change our bevel shape. So there's one last thing that we need to cover with our bevel node, and that is this custom curve input. So what this input allows us to do is modify the profile of the bevel. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's start by creating a new SVG. I'll hit the space bar to open my operational nodes. I'll go to SVG from new resource, and we'll just leave this in untitled. We'll click OK. Uh, let's set this node here to grayscale, and let's set the background to white. Let's grab our shape tool, and I'm going to just use uh, a square here, or a rectangle, and we'll set this to black. So here, let's just go ahead and draw this guy out. So here's our shape. Uh, here's our bevel. Let's come over to our library, drag and drop another instance of the bevel node. And so here we have our input. Let's take the output from our SVG, plug this into the source input of the bevel. We'll double click the bevel, and here's the shape that we get. Let's adjust our distance. So I'm gonna drop this guy down to uh, maybe something like uh, 0.18, and so this will this is good. Now before we go further, uh, one thing I do wanna mention is that you'll notice that we have this distance and smoothing setting again. So we've talked about these. Uh, what I want to bring to your attention is that the bevel node is actually a utility which houses uh, some more of the atomic nodes that we have. So if we hit the space bar, notice here we have the distance node. 
the distance node will cover uh, in a later tutorial. However, I just wanted to bring to your attention that the bevel node is actually utilizing the distance and the smoothing operation here is utilizing the new edge detect node as well that you can find here in our library. So just a little bit more information on how the bevel node is constructed. So again, back to our custom curve. So now we have a bevel in place and we want to, um, we want to change the profile of that bevel. So in order to do that, we need to feed an input into this custom curve, and that input needs to be a vertical gradient uh, that's going to represent the new profile for this bevel. So there's a couple ways we can do that. Uh, you can actually utilize a bitmap, uh, a gradient map. What I'm going to do here in my library is uh, I'm just going to search here for my linear gradient, and I'm going to utilize this node. So here I'm going to create an instance, left click, drag and drop the gradient node here into my graph. Uh, let's take the output of this node here and let's place it here into the custom curve. Uh, so what we want to do now, if we take a look at this gradient, uh, right now we just have basically going from uh, black to white, uh, bottom is black, uh, top is going to be white. Now the values of this, this image here, the, the values of the pixels here are what are going to be used to drive this custom curve. And the actual values that are being sampled are going to be the first row of pixels in the image. So that's going to be just this area here. So here's our linear gradient. Let's adjust our tiling. So maybe we'll do something like say four. Let's double click our bevel. Now nothing's happening just yet because we actually need to enable the custom curve. So all I have to do is take false here, this false uh, button and just set this to true. And now you can see that I've actually changed the profile of this bevel and I now get this kind of stepped bevel here by utilizing this custom gradient file that I've fed into the custom curve.